Hello, and welcome to NetAtWorks Sage 100 Training Tips and Tricks Series. My name is Andrew Crane, and today I'm going to show you about entering and use of miscellaneous items or non inventory items and how we set them up and use them. So, inside of Sage, we have a couple of modules for business for invoices. We have the sales order module, in which case we can create invoices that interact with the inventory module. We also have accounts receivable module to create invoices that do not interact with the inventory module. We can create non inventory items in two ways. One, in the accounts receivable module in the setup, there is miscellaneous item maintenance. There is the common information, miscellaneous item maintenance. And actually, there is a third inside of uh, inventory items, miscellaneous item maintenance. All three of those methods will bring you to this one place, miscellaneous item maintenance. Inside of miscellaneous items, we have the ability to create three types of miscellaneous or non-inventory items. There is what we call miscellaneous, which has to do with selling quantities at a price and come up with a total amount. We have a charge, which bypasses quantity and price and is just a flat amount. And then we have comments, which are mis, uh, mis just miscellaneous comments that we want to enter into invoices or sales order invoices. So currently, we have some that already exist. We have some miscellaneous fees that have been set up. And here we see a, an hourly fee. We set up a standard price if we want to use it that way. We determine which modules we want to use it in. We set up the chart of accounts for all the billing purposes and general ledger entry purposes. And whether or not it's taxable. So looking at some other ones, we have some comment lines. And the comment lines we can scroll through are just very simple, but it saves us from doing a lot of typing every time we want to enter some comments on an invoice or sales order. And we have miscellaneous charges. In this case, a miscellaneous charge, just called finish, has been created. And all that is is for a certain amount. So next, once we set those up, let's go into accounts receivable and go and create an invoice. And inside that invoice, we'll grab a customer. And if there's other information important, whether it's purchase orders, any of the terms, the dates, on the lines tab, notice if we do a lookup, we see all the miscellaneous items that we have said we will use in accounts receivable. So here is the one for fees, and you see it's Let's say I could make that five hours at $25 an hour. I could change the price to 50 hours. I could look up a miscellaneous item, just a standard gadget, and I want to sell four of those at $145. And then let's put on some comments. So one comment is going to say refund for damaged goods. If I wanted to look at this, I could open it up and take a look. And it allows us to put as much information as we want. Now, another place that we can use these miscellaneous items is in sales order. And I'm going to go to sales order entry and create a new sales order for a customer. Now, one of the differences here is if we do a lookup, because we're using the sales order module, we're going to see our inventory item. And with the basic lookup, only our inventory item. So if I wanted to sell 
two of these at $7, I could do that. I'm going to pick a different item that is not a serial or lot odd number. And so here's just one at $1,700. Now, in order to access the miscellaneous items, if I put in a slash and press the F2 key, it takes me to a lookup of my miscellaneous item list. Now, anything on this list that I said I wanted to be able to use in sales order will show up. So here is a miscellaneous charge for a marketing fee. There is no units, no price, just a flat fee of $500. I put in a slash, I pressed F2, and now I can add, um, let's say, the, the coin op. But now, because it's a miscellaneous item, not a miscellaneous chart, not a charge, I can say there are 12 of these at $50 a piece. Now it's warning me my cost is zero on that item. I'm okay with that. So here, as you see, if I wanted to do a comment, there are none. But if I put in a slash and I press F2, I can put in my comment. slash F2 and do a second comment. So it's going to save me a lot of time for typing and what else I need to look at. So simply put, if, if we go into, I'll say no to generating purchase orders. If we go into common information, miscellaneous items, we can create that new item. and decide if it's a miscellaneous, which means that there's going to be a quantity and a price when I sell it, a simple charge, or a comment. Regardless of which I choose, I can determine which modules that I want to use them in. And based on those selections, I have to then select the GL codes for proper posting. So should you have any questions, about how to use miscellaneous items further. If you need any assistance in other aspects and other tips and tricks, please feel free to reach out to your account managers listed above, or Lisa Margolis, our consulting manager, or myself, Andrew Crane, and we're more than happy to help you see all the ways that you can get the most out of using Sage 100 to help you grow your business. Thank you very much. Have yourself a wonderful day.